Sid Lowe joins us uh, from the Santiago Bernabeu. Sid, um, let's start off, shall we? What did Ancelotti have to say about Camavinga after the game? Yeah, Ancelotti says it's not a problem. He says that Camavinga will be fine for the Champions League game in midweek. He described it as just a knock, although, of course, it was then put to him again and it was asked repeatedly. But it appears that he twists his knee slightly as well. And he said, look, he feels a bit of discomfort in the knee. It has twisted ever so slightly, but we don't think there's any problem and that he will be fine for the City game. Uh, Sid, I imagine most of the press conference was dominated, was it, by looking ahead to the City game? Yeah, exactly. In fact, one of the questions, I think it was the second question from, from a colleague, Fernando Borgos, who works for one of the radio stations here, said, look, I'm not even going to pretend to ask you to, about tonight. <laughs> Let's ask about Wednesday night. And that was very much the focus. It was a focus all the way through the game. It was a focus building up to the game. It even felt like the focus amongst the fans. And, and of course, it's, it's entirely natural, so much so that, that later on in the press conference, Ancelotti was asked whether... By playing some of the players that he played, by putting Tony Cross on the pitch, by putting Vinicius on the pitch, Modric, and in particular, of course, playing Camavinga for what would have been 90 minutes had he not got that knock near the end, whether he was playing with fire. And I really quite liked Ancelotti's response. He said, in this job, you're always playing with fire. Uh, most definitely. What's the narrative going into that, that second leg, Sid, from the, from the Madrid fans and the papers there? I think that the first leg showed Real Madrid that they can compete with Manchester City, that the first leg showed that they can hurt Manchester City as well in that 15-20 minute period in the second half when they when they started to take chances. And also I think the way that they dealt with Haaland is really, really important. And we were discussing this a little bit before the game tonight, weren't we? That idea of what Ancelotti had said pre-game was that what I want is a small advantage from this first leg against City. And then he made the point that the advantage didn't necessarily need to be we go into the second leg in the lead. The advantage could be that we go into it feeling happy about the way we are, feeling that we're in good shape, feeling that we can compete with this team, feeling that we can do something. And I think the the, the line really from, from most Real Madrid fans and from, from everybody at the club is that yes, they can. And I think the first leg, from their point of view at least, demonstrated that to them and, and demonstrated that they can go into the second leg feeling reasonably confident. Now look, everybody knows how good Manchester City are. Everybody knows the kind of players they've got, the manager they've got, and the fact that they're at home, and they know that's different to last year. But I think there's a belief, said a bit quietly, but there's a belief underneath the surface here that this Real Madrid team may well be a slightly better team than last year. Yes, last year it had the epic, but, but there's a bit more of a sense of control about them this season. I thought that was Sid's taxi there. You think so, yeah? I'm coming to pick him up. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> look, I, I think... I honestly think there's more doubt in the City players' minds than there are in the Real Madrid players' minds. The Real Madrid guys have been over the course, and yes, City have got some big players, huge, playing great, but the memories of this competition in the last four or five years at the business end are not great. Whereas Real Madrid, who were written off by all and sundry last year and continue to charge on like a steam train, know that they can be patient and sit and wait and do what they did. They're not going to change a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah Militao might come in for Rudiger, but the rest of it will be the same. The tactics will be the same. They'll sit in, they'll make sure they've got a really nice shape and they will pounce on any little mistake. And it's not... Leeds United pouncing. It's not Everton pouncing. You know, it's not mid-table mediocrity in England. It is some of the most talented and quickest players who are clinical whenever, generally when they get an opportunity, clinical in that final third. And that has to be a real weight, I think, on the City players and their manager. I think mm. the manager will be having some nightmares about... What, what can he say is going to show up for him in terms of Man City? You know, are they going to go out and are they going to be clinical and get Haaland in the game? And they're going to, are they going to rip Real Madrid apart early and take the pressure off? Or are they going to be nervy and are the crowd going to be nervy? And it's just so many permutations about how this could go. Uh, I don't think it's a foregone conclusion just because City are at home that they're going through. I think Real Madrid are the most dangerous side on the planet when their backs are against the wall. And their backs will be against the wall on Wednesday. Sid Militao, of course, played today. Do you think it was a warm-up for Wednesday? Yeah, I think he played today because they want him to, to play on Wednesday. I think Ancelotti will... The one doubt Ancelotti may have 
in my opinion at least, is whether or not he plays all three of those central defenders. So it'd be Rudiger, Militao and Alaba who would go at left back and then Kamavinga to come into midfield. That's the variation that I can see. I think Militao goes back in. Yes, there could be a doubt about whether it's Rudiger or Alaba alongside him, but I think the other doubt is whether it actually ends up being all three of them. And therefore, what you change further up the pitch, of course, the likelihood then would be maybe Rodrigo pulls out of the team and, and, and Valverde goes into that hybrid role at the top of the pitch. And I think one of the things that, that Craig was talking about there is, is absolutely right. Right. That idea that Real Madrid, the, the, the two year words Craig used were, were, were patience and wait. And I think Real Madrid are a really good team at waiting. They have that combination, if you like, of the supreme confidence that says we're good enough and our moment will come. But also, if you like, the humility that goes with it that says we know that there will be periods in the game where the other team makes it difficult for us. In fact, Tony Cruz had said in the pre-match press conference before the first leg, he'd said, there will be periods in this game where we have to run around after the ball. And they know that. And I think a lot of really big teams with the kind of quality of players that Real Madrid have, they kind of don't accept that. They, they, you know, they, they, would, they would panic in those moments in which they don't have possession. And I get the feeling with Real Madrid, and it was partly learned through last year, and yes, there's a huge degree of luck involved. Yes, there's a huge degree of, of kind of miracle, if you like, involved. But there's also talent. There's also the, the competitive mindset, if you like. But also that patience, that humility that says, yeah, they can, well, they can be better than us. They may well be better than us for a big stretch of the game. But we know that if we survive and we're still standing, then the moment will come. And this is why... There's a bit of me that thinks if it's really tight, it's more likely Real Madrid go through. That the best opportunity City have, in a way, is to kind of blow them apart mm. and to not let them be in a position where it can be tight. Uh, Sid, thank you. What's it, midnight now outside the Bernabeu? Five-minute walk up to Larry's for a lock-in? <laughs> As you well know, Daniel, Larry's is no more, and Larry's is partly no more because you left. And once their number one client left, that place could not survive anymore. Uh well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.